What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Anthony, your host for the Mindless Horror Podcast. George can't be here this week, but I have a very special guest with me. His, uh, he's just you know starting out the YouTube thing. He's much like myself, and I, I, I have a really good feeling he's going to make it up there because his content is really good. Uh, he's caught all of our attention. His name, Eddie Tainment. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, man, thanks for accepting the invite, man. Um, you know, I've been watching your videos and they're pretty, they're really good. Um, I honestly, uh, I could see pretty much it's like, uh, it's like me, but over there in, uh, on the East Coast. So that's pretty cool. We have another Florida guy to look at and uh, yeah. really looking forward to that, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Trying to get the content out for you guys. Oh, yeah, man. We got you and Zombie Chris now. So uh, that's, that's, that's cool. Now you guys can probably do uh, hopefully future collaborations out there. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping this year when I go down. Uh, I'll be down there for the opening and hopefully go back in October as well. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do this this year as well. Go a couple times, check it out and stuff. So, um, so yeah, thank you again for being on the podcast, man. I, so we had a lot to talk about and uh, hopefully uh, some stuff catches your interest. Uh, I don't know. There's a couple things in here that's not going to really catch my interest, but it's still horror news, so we got to talk about it. Well, let's uh, do it. So first, we're gonna start out like we do every show with our shoutouts. Uh, today we got two shoutouts. First for Eddie Tainment for being on my show today because uh, it was really cool for him to accept, and uh, he makes amazing content. So the link for his channel will be in the description below. Check him out if you wanna know some news for the East Coast of uh, HHN Florida. He's one of your guys to go to. So check him out. Thank you. Um, and secondly, is gonna be the audience because without the audience, none of us would be here. So. Let's get started with our topics. First thing I want to talk about on the podcast today is, uh, so Quentin Tarantino, he's making a Charles Manson movie. Uh, we've been covering this for a while now. And uh, he's adding, he added a couple of cast members that I, I really I really like, and I'm kind of, kind of got me more excited for this movie. So a couple of the cast members he added this past week were Burt Reynolds, Tim Roth, Kurt Russell, and Michael Madsen. So... Really excited for that because uh, in the past we have seen Tarantino work with these actors. Um, this new movie should be pretty good. It's supposed to take place uh, in the point of view of Leo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. They're playing an actor and a stunt double who moved to Hollywood in the 1960s, I believe, or the 70s, around the time where the Charles Manson family killed Sharon Tate. Um, what, do you th what do you think about this new cast coming in? So you're giving me a lot of fresh information. I had no idea that Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt would be on it. That's actually amazing. Those are two of my favorite, and I would probably argue to say that those are probably like two of the top five actors in the world right now. Oh, yeah. Um, one thing I, I did hear, so I didn't know that those actors were in it, but um, is it also being released on the anniversary of Sharon Tate's death yeah so tarantino i guess it's supposed to be releasing sometime next year and he's trying to release it around that time so hmm. i wonder how uh tasteful that is <laughs> yeah i yeah it's just because i always i've always been interested in this case uh regardless because uh the manson murders are just they're infamous these days and charles manson i think he just died like either a couple months ago or something like that and uh, that was a big deal when that happened too. So, for them to, I know there's there's two Charles Manson movies being made right now. Um, Tarantino's is honestly the favorite right now, but I think the girl who directed uh, American Psycho is making a Charles Manson movie as well. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, yeah his story is an interesting one for sure. Uh, to to be able to manipulate as many people as he did in the way that he did, you got to have some type of genius. Um, the videos and stuff that I've been able to see of him in like jail being interviewed, he seems crazy, but obviously he had some type of charm to him. I, I look forward to actually seeing a movie like this. It's it piques my interest for sure. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of those interviews too, where he's just kind of like saying like, uh, "I'm nobody, I'm like a hobo and all that." Like, I'm just like, dude, what, what, what's going on in your head, man? And uh, it, it was cool. I mean, I know on American Horror Story this season too, uh, this this past season that just happened, uh, there was um, so what's his name. Uh, Evan Peters, he's one of the main uh, cast stars on American Horror Story, and in this in this season he played a cult leader. So uh, a couple, I think an episode or two, uh, there was one episode where he was going back 
and uh, they were showing all the previous like cult leaders and stuff like that, like really famous ones. But Evan Peters was playing all the cult leaders, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, one of them was Charles Manson, and in that, in that one of the episodes, they do show the Manson murder with uh, Sharon Tate, which is really like uh, it was really well put together. Um, and that was just a preview of what's to come. I can only imagine. I'm interested in this movie because it's going to be in the point of view of Leo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, who, like I said, were an actor and a stunt double trying to make it in Hollywood, and they move right next to Sharon Tate. So I'm interested to see how this movie is going to play out. That's interesting. Yeah, that's real interesting. It's it's like a an outside vantage point getting to see the whole entire thing. That's interesting. I that I, I'm blown away that they that they got those two together to begin with. Have have they ever done a movie together before? I, from my knowledge, I'm, I'm going to say no, but I don't want to uh, assault any of the fanboys out there that are like diehard. Like, no, they've done a movie together. It's like, I, I, yeah. I personally don't know, but I know Tarantino has worked with those two actors in the past. Yeah. Um, and Tarantino is, fi- he's also famous for putting Tim Roth and Michael Madsen in a lot of his movies as well. So I'm kind of not surprised those two are back, but no, no disrespect to them. I love those actors. They're, they're amazing actors. Um, Michael Madsen killed it in Reservoir Dogs. Um, Tim Roth uh, repeated as well. He was in Reservoir Dogs too. Uh, they were both amazing in that. They were both in also the uh, his last movie, The Hateful Eight, which was really good. Um, so as well as Kurt Russell. I don't think I've ever seen Burt Reynolds in a movie, and I I may have I may have just lost knowledge on it. He might have been in uh, um, Jackie Brown, but I, I don't remember. I haven't watched that movie in so long, but yeah, I'm I'm sure I've seen Burt Reynolds, but I couldn't recall the name of the movie. Yeah, because I've seen I've seen I, I I've seen all of those movies at least once. Uh, Jackie Brown, I've only seen once. So um, yeah, I mean he had Kurt Russell in one of my favorite Tarantino movies, Death Proof, which was it was amazing. I, I love that movie to this day. Stuntman Mike, uh, that was a very good movie. Uh, it's kind of like a horror thriller movie in a way, but like. It's pretty good. If you've never seen it, I really highly suggest it. It's a very good Tarantino flick. Okay, I'm going to have to put that on my list. I have like a whole list. I, I think I'm, there's going to be a whole new series. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. So, so, yeah, look out for that Charles Manson movie. It's coming out, I think, sometime next year, I, I think. Uh, I don't even know if they started shooting yet. I think he's just casting. But there, there is a script done, uh, a lot of casting going through. So he might start shooting either this summer or sometime this fall. Look out for that next year. It should be coming soon. Um, okay, moving on, John Krasinski uh, is most famous for The Office and most recently A Quiet Place. He said he wants to open up the world to uh, A Quiet Place for the sequel. So basically meaning that um, in this, I don't know if you've seen Quiet Place yet. Have you seen Quiet Place yet? Yeah, I, I did. I actually have a review on it and everything. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that was a fantastic movie. Um, it did a lot better than I thought it was going to do. And I remember going into the theater uh, expecting one thing and walked out expecting uh, having different expectations for it. So, um, Agree. It did a lot with a little. Yeah. And uh, what I mean by that is, like, uh, obviously, it's a quiet place. So the lack of actual dialogue and what they were able to still express through just physical emotion was crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, on top of that, I went to go see it in the in one of the Dolby Cinema theaters. So it was like, a lot of people are like, "Why would you pay extra money to go see a movie that's quiet the entire time?" Well, it's like, well, I look at it this way: when they do make noise, it's going to be loud and it's going to scare the crap out of me. So um, that's probably why I did it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm curious because I, I going into that movie, we find out that okay, this this town is infected by. Uh, not really infected, but these aliens crash landed. There's only three in their town, but how many are there in the world? You know, so like I, I was curious to see where else in the world got uh, invaded. Um, how many people are still left in the world? Because in this town, it didn't look like very many people were left. Uh, I know that in the movie, uh, we did they, we did see this thing where um, John Krasinski every night would go up on his water tower and light a fire, and then you saw little fires everywhere else. So you're assuming those are other survivors, just kind of keeping in contact saying yeah we're still alive but i want to see who else is alive in the world you know like did california get hit you know new york florida you know all those places in the world did they get hit or yeah now this this was definitely a a movie that left me with a lot of questions 
But it was almost one of those where like you're kind of okay with those questions because it allows you to kind of just create that story in your mind. I'm not sure that I, I'm a hundred on uh, them doing a sequel for it, um, just because this was such an unexpected success in my eyes that I don't want to see it get ruined. Yeah, um, and I and I feel the same way because uh, you know with with the movie uh, doing as good as it did, and they said they did have plans for a sequel. My only thing is like. Okay, that's always good for a sequel, but if you if you try to force it out and just keep making sequels just to make money, um, eventually, sometimes story doesn't make sense. And they've done that a couple times with a couple of movies where they they kind of just popped in out just because they're money makers. Uh, for example, and I love I love this franchise, but you can be honest. I mean, they they, they just started popping up, you know, popping them all out just because they wanted money for the studio. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street is the perfect example of a movie. That started out as a freaking classic. It's still a great movie to this day. But then as sequels went on, they started getting um, not as great as the original. They just started popping them out just for money. It's just like if, if A Quiet Place is going towards that direction, I wouldn't want to see sequels. But if they have works as in um, they want to start uh, going around the world and focusing on other places in the world, by all means, I'm, I'm kind of curious to hear those stories. I did read something that... This movie is supposed to take place uh, somewhere else in the world, and it's going to be a different family, so it won't be the same family as last time. So that should be a little bit interesting. So what you're saying is like just uh, basically like a different vantage point, same timeline? Yeah, different vantage point. It's going to be the same timeline. Uh, you're just going to see a new family and stuff like that. I think Krasinski is on to maybe write and direct again. I'm not too sure on that, though, yet. Interesting. So yeah, and with... With Krasinski coming out and then Jordan Peele, it almost makes me wonder who's the next like funny guy who's going to come out with an amazing horror movie and how many of these guys have this secret talent. <laughs> yeah, and I, that was cool because um, uh, in 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 the uh, in interviews I would watch for uh, Quiet Place when they were on talk shows and stuff, like people kept asking, like, "Hey, so John, are you like a fan of horror?" He goes, "I honestly, I hate horror, but." Uh, and then, so they would always tease him, like, it's weird that you're making this movie. He goes, honestly, I, I, I feel the same, but it was just the, he goes, I looked at it as more of a, f a kind of family movie where, like, this guy has to protect his family from a, a threat, so that's how I kind of looked at it. I didn't look at it too much as a horror movie, but as, a, like, a family, a family thriller movie, which, when he put that in perspective, and after watching the movie, I was like, okay, that, I can see where you're going with that. He goes, because... I know that John Krasinski and, and um, his wife have a family of their own, so I think he compared a lot of this movie to his personal family and what he would do in the situation, which, in a way, if, you, if you're a husband and wife who are uh, already, like, uh, already have that chemistry, it was just kind of like, okay, well, I could see they're, they're just pretty much acting like parents, how they would in the real world, how they would protect their kids and stuff, which I really enjoyed of that aspect. Yeah, definitely, and that, that's another... Uh, another interesting part about it, a lot of times when you get couples that try to come together on the screen, uh, very notably uh, J-Lo and Ben Affleck, it ends up being a disaster. But this came together well because that was his wife in the movie. Yeah, so that was uh, – it was really cool. Um, I really enjoyed that a lot. So hopefully the sequels are going to be better. Um, I am really I really am hoping they will be better because um, – like I said, there's been sequels in the past where like they just are disappointing and stuff. So we'll see. Um, so we're gonna move on here. Uh, we do this segment on our podcast every week where we uh, we look at some bad acting in horror movies. So uh, horror movies are typically not perfect, but it's the bad acting that usually make them iconic. And uh, this week, uh, I have my buddy here, and we were just talking about horror movies. He, uh, I gave him a, a, a list of horror movies to check out. One of the lists I gave him was the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This bad horror movie scene um, is also an iconic scene in the movie, but uh, I, I think, honestly, it's the, the guy's reaction that really just made me look like, okay, why are you just looking at him? But uh, the scene I'm about to show you is obviously um, in, in the movie. So in the movie, basically, the premise is these teens go on a road trip, and I think they break down or something like that. So they go looking for help, and they discover this house. It happens to be Leatherface's house. So... One of the guys walks in and looks around and stuff, and then uh, the most iconic scene in the movie is when Leatherface opens his uh, door and hits him with a hammer um, or like a mallet or something like that. Um, and he, t 
the guy's reaction is honestly just it's pretty funny because uh he kind of looks at him he makes like a scared face but the face is just like it's so bad that like it just made me like look at it like wow this is this is just horrible so this week's horror movie acting uh texas chainsaw massacre 1974 i'll just play the audio for you right here real quick <laughs> So yeah, I mean, uh, I'll put the video on the screen. Um, basically, what had happened was uh, Leatherface hits the guy over the head with the mallet, and he falls on the floor. And the entire what also makes this scene kind of shitty to me is he's making pig noises the entire time. And then uh, when the guy's on the floor, he's like flopping like a fish. And I'm just like, okay, well, you don't really need to do that. I mean, you're dead. So that's this week's bad horror movie acting. I still love that movie to death because it's a classic. But yeah, man, I just I don't know. Um, all right, moving on to the next topic. So, um, this week was a, a, a kind of a big week in horror. Uh, these next two topics are going to be pretty uh, heavily discussed, hopefully. Um, the first one, which really got me excited, they released the first uh, Predator teaser trailer. And it looks, I think it looks amazing. What do you think, man? So from what I've been able to see, I, I haven't actually watched the, the whole trailer on my own. I saw a bit of it on zombie Chris and a, a little bit of it on uh, awkward Arsic. I, I didn't get to finish either one of their posts, so I didn't get to watch it all the way through. But from what I've seen, it's piqued my interest. I definitely want to want to check it out. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the the Predator movies, so this one's definitely gonna gonna be a must watch on my end. Yeah, and so I had also read um, this is actually a direct sequel to Predators back in 2010 that they made. Um, I kind of find that interesting because uh, it took them actually seven years to make another one. And so I'm, I'm curious to see how they're going to tie that into uh, the first one. Is it going to be – I know in Predators, they, it was kind of like a – so there was the Predators and then there were like these old – like the way best way I can describe them, they were like ultra Predators. So they didn't really care about their own kind. So they would hunt their own kind for like sport and for fun and stuff like that on top of hunting humans and stuff. So – um, I'm curious to see, are we going to get a return of those predators or are we going to get just the regular predators who just hunt down stuff and kill people? I'm curious to see, uh, a lot about this movie. Uh, are we going to get maybe possibly an Arnold cameo? Um, <laughs> you know, I just, there's a lot of stuff I, I would like to see in this movie. Uh, there's a, there's a pretty star studded cast in it. Olivia Munn, um, she's in it. Uh, uh, Key from Key and Pills in it, which is, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting because I know Jordan Pill is doing writing and directing horror movies and then i guess key is starring in um some this this is his first horror movie i think he's starring in um tom jane who played the punisher back in the days in it um the bad guy from logan uh who had the robot hand he's gonna be in it he's a pretty good actor i like him too um shane black's doing it too so shane black i think he did the original predator and he did he did a lot of the predator franchise so um, I'm just curious to see how this movie's going to be. I mean, this is only a teaser trailer so far, so um, it looks pretty good. Uh, it's going to be on Earth again, so I don't know, man. Yeah, no, it's it sounds really good. I, I don't know the, the whole entire cast. Of course, Olivia Munn, because she's gorgeous. He, because of his, his skits with, with Jordan Peele. But uh, Shane Black, um, I, I know that he, he did Predator back in the day. He also did some other notable movies, didn't he? Uh, didn't he do like an Iron Man? I yeah, think? he did Iron Man three, and he also did. There was another big one that he did um, that I can't remember at this moment. I think it was a comedy of some sort, but he did it. And when I found that out, I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." But yeah, he did Iron Man three, um, and in the the trailer, they said from the director of Iron Man three. So, um, the the only thing that scares me right now about this movie is, um. Much like how they did with Truth or Dare promotional, they put Blumhouse's Truth or Dare. Uh, in this trailer a lot, you see, like, uh, 20th Century Fox Studios presents, like... So, they're, they're trying to brand it. I mean, we know 20th Century obviously owns the rights to Predator, but they're branding it way too much, which kind of scares me. Like, it's set up to be a failure, which I hope not. Um, I've, already heard a, I've heard a lot of bad stuff going into this uh, movie as far as filming went and stuff like that. This movie needed a lot of reshoots and... It's actually got pushed back to September. Um, original release date was supposed to be in August. So I'm, I'm just, 
I'm, I'm a little scared, but it's a Predator movie, so obviously I'm going to go watch it because I, I absolutely love the Predators. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to watch this one as well. Um, but yeah, I, I could completely understand your fear here when when you hear those type of things. And not just that. I mean, the, the franchise itself has been all over the place. It's, you know, the, the Predator franchise as a singular franchise. Um, and then when it when it mixed with Aliens, there's so much out there that I'm, I'm probably going to actually have to go back just so I could get the lineage correct <laughs> and, yeah. and figure out where they're where they're picking up here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said in the trailer, they didn't give us too much. Then again, this is only a teaser trailer, so this ain't like a full trailer. But they didn't give us too much on um, the timeline yet. Uh, what I do know is this is for sure a sequel to Predators back in 2010, like I said. Um, but I want to know uh, more about it. So hopefully, uh, as the trailers keep coming out in the near future, or even at Comic Con uh, coming this summer, um, we get more of a. Uh, understanding of where the timeline is on this movie so uh that should be pretty good i i i really want to have faith on this because i know after the new the latest alien covenant movie they kind of just shut down the series they're like not doing anymore which kind of made me mad because they were starting to set up to like meet the queen alien and all that like that so that kind of made me disappointed so i have a lot of faith in predator hopefully that this franchise keeps going as of right now there's no talks of doing another alien but we'll see in the future hopefully um. Yeah. All right, Jordan Peele, he's back in the horror uh, game again. Uh, he just announced this week a new horror movie, and it's entitled uh, Us. Uh, the only thing we know about it is a select few cast was uh, was uh, asked to join, and I think they did join the cast, officially signed on and everything, and uh, they gave us a movie poster. But it wasn't like a legitimate like movie poster. I mean, it was just kind of like a, a kind of like a like a promotional art kind of thing, like as like yeah. the first movie poster. Yeah, it's just like a silhouette. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty. Um, it looks really cool. The the poster though, I mean, it's like a little. It's like it just shows like two kids. Um, it's just all. It's mostly just black and white poster. Uh, so he's got. Damn it! Freaking ads on. <laughs> my phone okay i'm trying to avoid people texting me right now on my laptop <laughs> no yeah i'm just uh i'm trying to get the bloody disgusting list up all right so he's got uh winston duke who's most famously known for black panther recently and uh avengers infinity war um lupita nuag and elizabeth moss are officially on as cast members um and Winston Duke and Lupita Nuong are going to be playing a couple. Uh, and Elizabeth Moss, along with someone else, are going to be playing another couple. So this is actually about a couple movie, um, which kind of makes me wonder, is this maybe secretly, maybe the sequel to Get Out, maybe? Or is this an original movie? Yeah, possibly. And Get Out's another one of those that, like, you know, if, if uh, a sequel is made, I hope it's done extremely well just because... It's it's almost one of those that I just hope they maybe they leave it as is. But I'm so glad that that Jordan Peele is is coming out with another one. I'm really hoping it is an original concept, just because he did so well. I, I've been actually praying for him to make an announcement, and this is a lot sooner than I expected. Yeah, um, and I'm with you on the whole Get Out uh, sequel. Uh, we talked about this before on a podcast, but uh, my co-host George thinks that a Get Out sequel would be pretty good. Uh, and then I kind of think it won't be good though, because like you got to look at it, um, in two different ways In the original cut, I think, uh, he doesn't end up killing, um, the girl, uh, his, you know, his girlfriend in the movie. And then mm -hmm. in the extended cut, he ends up choking her to death. So, um, it, it, it's kind of hard to, to, to tell what's going to happen if they do make a sequel. I don't know how they can make a sequel unless they, they have a... A family that does the same exact i don't know you've, you've seen get out right yeah yeah definitely. yeah so yeah you know the, you know the premise of how they take out the brains and then put them in the other bodies and and stuff like that and yep it was like a it was like a twist ending that no one saw coming but um yeah i mean it was like i don't know how they can continue off of that and and keep going i i i'm i'm just, I'm just curious to see how this is going to work out if they do make a sequel yeah so am I. I mean, 
I, I always, or, you know, in, in general, we're always going to say when we see a, a great original concept that we don't want it to get ruined with a, a sequel that potentially can do that. But if the sequel comes out, I will definitely be supporting it. I'll definitely be out there watching it. And if it's great, I will commend them for it again. Yeah. Um, but I, from what I've read, it, it doesn't seem like Us is necessarily uh, a sequel, but maybe I, I haven't read enough just yet. Yeah, I know that um, – I know right now that he just like he just announced it. I don't even know if they – I'm assuming he's going to have a script for it because he had to pitch this concept to them. So they probably already have a script. Uh, I think that I think they actually start shooting this summer. Um but I'm curious to see how um, this movie's going to play out. Like, yeah, y- uh, you said it's most likely not a sequel to Get Out, which, um, yeah, I-, I could see probably. But, like, the the whole thing that, that gets me going is the uh, the whole couples thing, and that, that brings me back full circle because, like, I know in um, Get Out it was about a couple, and then they go out to her parents' house, and then, you know, you find out some stuff is not right, and then she's just kind of like, okay, what's going on? And then, you know, the movie starts unfolding and stuff like that. Um, I'm curious to see what this one's going to be about. We haven't gotten too much information about it, just the fact that uh, there's this movie. Uh, it's called Us, and he announced the cast, and I think he did a little brief synopsis about it. Um, who knows, though? Maybe it will be uh, probably one of the best horror movies ever again. Because I think Get Out was nominated. It actually won an Academy Award this year. Yep. Uh, so I, I did a, uh, a short video on the Academy Awards, kind of just – Commending him and Guillermo del Toro for The Shape of Water. That was a fantastic uh, movie. Yeah, another fantastic movie. Um, but if Jordan Peele is able to twice in a row surprise me, because uh, Get Out was a complete surprise to me, then I will think that e- even though he's so early in his like horror movie career, I think he'll be solidified just because two in a row that successful. And if both of them are original concepts – that says something about his horror genius. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm going to be honest with you. When, when Get Out was first announced and all that, I uh, I honestly, when I saw the trailer, I thought, I was like, this movie's going to be fucking dumb. Like, yeah. I, I just, I don't, I was like, what, what, why? I was like, why is Jordan Peele making this? Why is he making horror now? He was a comedy guy, you know? And I'm just like, I'm not going to see it. And then I waited till it finally came on cable. Um, and it, it wasn't more of the line, like, I'm not going to go see this in theaters. It was more in the line, like, like, I just completely forgot about it. And then it was on TV one time and I was like, oh shit, I'll, maybe I'll check it out now. And I, and I watched it and I was like, wow, this movie was fantastic. I was like, I did not expect that at all. And so now I'm, 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 I'm curious to see what he's going to bring in the future. Uh, I know he's working with Blumhouse again, so that's always good. Blumhouse right now is on top of the world. So yeah, I love those guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're, they're making one of my favorites right now. Halloween. Yes, sir. <laughs> yep. Uh, that there's new actually news coming up for that in a bit. Um, we'll get to okay. that pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I think one of the most memorable moments. I, 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 you know, I've I liked Blumhouse prior to uh, this last year's event, but after this past year, I, I liked him a little bit more because I actually got to meet Jason Blum, which was really cool. Um, and when when did that happen for you? Uh, when I went opening night last year at uh, Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, lucky you, man. Yeah, he that... was he was there. Uh, he walked through his uh, Whores of Blumhouse maze, and the whole cast of Happy Death Day was there. Uh, a couple of uh, Frank Grillo from The Purge was there. Um, it was really cool. That's a crazy experience, man. Going this, this year for opening, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I get to meet somebody, at least Mike Aiello. That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, I hope. I don't know how it is over there, how they do their – if a lot of celebrities go over there. I, I that's actually one event I uh, hopefully uh, save some money and go. On. I want to fly out there and go to that. I want to see their event. Make a weekend out of it too. Like go to Disney World or make like a whole week out of it. Go to Disney World and fucking Universal and then go to fucking Horror Nights over there. It'd be it'd be really cool. I, I want to make a whole week out of it. So yeah, man. Let me know if you if you do. I I, I could either help you with some insight on the hotels, or if if maybe I I could actually strategize something and get myself down there so we could meet. That'd be awesome too. Oh yeah, dude, for sure. Um, same thing over here, man. If you want to come over, freaking, I know we're supposed to be doing me, the league, uh, awkward, R sick and so Cal are actually supposed to be doing something in the near, um, future at midsummer scream this year. I'm not going to give too much details away, but, uh, it's going to be good. I'll leave the link for the description of what we might be doing this year for one of their videos they did last year, but, uh, it's okay. pretty cool. Um, nice. 
All right, we're going to move on to the kill of the week. Um, I usually have George do this, but if we have guests, I usually have the guests do this because I want to see what they have for kill of the week. So, Mr. Eddie, what did you have for this week for kill of the week? Um, so, for me, the kill of the week, as I just said a few moments ago, my favorite movie is Halloween. And the most iconic kill in my like history of watching Halloween or any actual horror movie is the original Halloween when he kills Bob in the kitchen against the pantry. Oh, um, yeah. He hangs him like his knife is like through his shoulder and he's hanging on the wall. And then he does the iconic step back and kind of just like cock his head to the side. Yeah. yeah. Observes work. That that to me like solidified Michael Myers as uh my my favorite horror killer ever like slasher film, he it, it was so cool because it it just kind of brought brought like some more horror to the or uh, how can I put this in words um he, he became more terrifying through the lack of, of emotion that's on his mask just by cocking back his his head to the side like that i don't know what it did for me but it, I, I think a, a couple people could connect with that little tilt of the head and how oddly eerie it is yeah i mean and and that honestly became a, a famous kind of serial killer move because not only did he do that but if you watch a couple of the friday 13th movie jason Voorhees does that a couple times too so um i'm gonna play that clip right now on screen for you guys so check this out kill of the week halloween pantry scene All right, guys, that was your kill of the week. Um, that should be pretty good. I uh, like I said, that was that's that's just a, that that scene gives me goosebumps every time I watch it, just because, like you said, the whole hilt, head tilt and everything. It's one of uh, also it's the first Halloween movie, so I mean that that movie's iconic as it is. So yeah, <laughs> um, that in it. Go ahead. I said yeah, that in itself is already iconic. Yeah. Um, speaking of Halloween, on to our next topic. Um, this week actually, Halloween went back for additional photography. So I guess they're doing either some reshoot, reshoots, or some more uh, filming. Um, so I am both excited for this next Halloween movie and a little, a uh, little skeptical about this Halloween movie at the same time. Only because, so the timeline for this is gonna be like they're just scrapping away number two, like number two never happened, and this is like the alternative of what happened after Halloween. Um, they're making it sound like, from what I've read, they're gonna. So they, I guess they catch him at the end of Halloween one, of some sort, and they put him back into the, um, to the insane asylum where he was at, and then uh, it's gonna be like forty years later, and I guess he's gonna break out and try to go after uh, Lori and her daughter and her granddaughter. So. Yeah, the the whole timeline and that shifting is is extremely interesting, but. Um... As you could already tell, I probably have like the most biased opinion when it comes to this topic. So I'm just <laughs> so excited. I I really can't think anything negative of it. And um, yeah, I also I read a couple other interesting things. So like with this change in timeline, um, I don't know if you read this. Let me know if you did. Um, they're no longer siblings. Wait, what? Yeah. So I read somewhere that the the change in timeline somehow they this they corrected because if if the change in timeline happened it would the the whole sibling thing would be a contradiction somehow i i, I don't remember how exactly i read this probably like last week um but somehow this ends up making it so that they aren't actually siblings and that fix that fixes some contra contradictions that potentially could come of it and it's i, I guess the lineage of how it moves 
Well, then that kind of, in my in my opinion, that kind of almost it doesn't make sense now though because in the in the first movie the reason why he went to go kill her was because he was trying to kill off all of his family and that was his uh baby sister so he was going to go back to kill his baby sister but if they're going to the fact that they never were siblings then what what's the point and now he's just going to go back to kill her just for revenge cuz he I don't and I Some... yeah and I also heard like well I mean I can see why he's not going to be in it cuz the guy's dead but um Loomis ain't gonna be in the movie. Uh, like no mention. Uh, like no mention. I, I, I guess like no like uh, like grandson or anything of Loomis is gonna be in the movie. Like there's no gonna there's not gonna be a Loomis in this movie. So I found yeah, that a little bit interesting. Um, that's a bit of a of a shame for sure. Yeah, uh, but I can also see why because I, I I know the actor in real life is dead. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that makes sense. Um, I, I'm I'm kind of just happy they got Jamie Lee Curtis. They convinced her to come back. Um, that was a big plus for me, um, and that's another reason why I'm excited. I'm also excited for this movie because, um, for one, and here's an, here's another example of a comedy guy writing some horror. Danny McBride wrote uh, – was one half of the writer of this movie. Um, yeah, I read that. Yeah, and he when he pitched to John Carpenter, John Carpenter loved it. So if John Carpenter, the guy who created Halloween, loved the movie, that that's the reason why it keeps me going and keeps it alive for me because – John Carpenter will go down in history as one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. He uh, he he created some of the best um, horror movies, sci-fi movies. You know, like of course Halloween, The Thing. Uh, he or he remade The Thing. Let me say that. Uh, but his remake is probably the best remake and best uh, Thing movie to this day. Um, you know, Escape from New York and all that. So, you know, John Carpenter. He's done so much in his career that like he's one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. And for him to give an approval saying, like, yeah, this this is going to be a good movie and stuff like that, and him even helping out uh, with producing and, and doing the score and stuff like that, like, that really gets me excited because the score for the first movie is so iconic and so fantastic. It was just done on a piano, and I felt that it's just so iconic that it gives me goosebumps every time I watch the movie. Yeah. No, and I, I recently watched uh, – uh a documentary about the original Halloween and how the basically the chain of events went down, uh, how they got the the movie funded, and basically they did it on an extremely limited budget. And this guy was just amazing in the way that he was able to create this movie in the short amount of time. I think it was like twenty one days or something like that. Yeah, that, I read that too about the the whole how he only had so much time to make this movie, and yeah, this was actually if you uh, if you go back. To when this movie first this is this movie was actually considered a B movie. Yeah, yep, and it, it was done on a budget that at that time was like unheard of for for a movie. But he said that he could do it, and they gave him that budget, which I think it ended up being three hundred thousand. But in order to bring uh, Loomis in, who was the biggest actor that they had on cast at that time, yeah, um, they had to like add another twenty thousand, so it ended up being three hundred and twenty. Um, from the original 300 but originally people were were thinking you know if we're spending too much on on it it's it's nerve-wracking but at the same time if we're spending too little it's nerve-wracking and that this was the case for them it was the people who were investing in it were thinking well how what are you going to be able to do how are you going to be able to get my money back if i'm only giving you three hundred thousand? that doesn't sound like enough money to actually be able to put out a masterpiece but this guy did it and now the, the with the new change i'm actually intrigued because uh, as you know, sequels kind of become redundant. You know, you and I watching the originals and loving the originals, we we already know what's going to happen. So we're just kind of going to watch to hope that it's not ruined and they stay true to the original concept. Changing up the the storyline a little bit, we get some refreshing uh, approach and we don't know what's going to happen, which that's a cool idea in my opinion. Yeah. Another thing I found interesting in this movie too was the fact that uh... – they so they they showed a trailer at CinemaCon um, like a couple weeks ago. Uh, they have not released that trailer yet, and people are getting fierce because people want to see this trailer. Um, but uh, in the trailer, they described um, Laurie Strode's character. She's more uh, so. Let me go back a little bit. Uh, when this movie started filming at first, we started seeing uh, set photos of Jamie Lee Curtis on set. We also saw photos that she shared on her personal social media of her at the shooting range practicing and stuff like that. So you got to imagine uh, this is like 40 years later. And um, 
she's still very well uh, aware of Michael Myers, uh, you know, well-being and stuff like that. In this movie, in this next movie, they're, so like I said uh, before, in this next movie, they're trying to make it like um, he got caught by the cops and sent back to the uh, asylum, and then he's going to break out again and try to kill Laurie again. Um, so in this movie, she's way more self-aware. She, like, every little thing kind of takes her off and scares her and stuff like that. Um, I did read that she's going to have a daughter and a granddaughter in this movie. So her daughter is the, um, if you've ever seen Jurassic World, uh, the girl who played the actual mom of the kids um, that you only see, like, yeah. at the very beginning and at the very end. She's playing Lori's daughter. Okay. Um, and then I don't know who's playing the uh, her daughter, you know, her granddaughter. So um, I know uh, they explained it like, uh, Lori had them come over Halloween night because she's still very much like she's very paranoid of the events that occurred 40 years ago and she's trying to take care of them and stuff and she, she's really scared because uh, I think the granddaughter really wants to go trick-or-treating but she's very scared that like something's going to happen while they go out and um, I, I don't blame her because she's been through so much on Halloween night that she's just she will never forget that that's forever in her mind um, that makes sense um so they they kind of explain Laurie's character in this movie as more of like a, a badass survivor who's like ready to go if it ever happens again. Yeah, and just a, an FYI, while you were saying that, I kind of like looked looked up my my prior statement about them being siblings just to see if if I could verify that. And apparently, the the actual plot line of him him and her being siblings wasn't actually introduced until Halloween two. So yeah. Um, and, and it, it's not verified that they that that's going to happen, but, uh, they, they said that certain statements that John Carpenter has made, make it seem as if they may be switching that up in the, in the actual plot line. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. Now, now that you're saying that, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Cause in Halloween two, they do officially verify about that. Um, I want to say it's, I think it's Loomis who does it, right? Does he, was he the one that? I confirmed it, it. It's been so long since I've seen Halloween too. Yeah, and I, I actually just ordered the DVD set, so I'll, I'll be watching it over again. But I, I believe so. I think yeah. you're right. Um, because I think he ends up meeting with uh, Laurie again, or either that, or he talks to one of the cops like that's his sister, and he's trying to kill him. Because I know throughout the whole movie, he's trying to get to the hospital where Michael's at. Um, I will say too, uh, Halloween Two is one of the best sequels ever made, like hands down. No, agreed, one hundred percent. That the the sequel to to Halloween was exponentially better than the first, and that's that being said, that I love the first that much already. Yeah, uh, and so now going back to this, I'm gonna re change my uh, opinion about it. Now that you brought up the whole uh, sibling wasn't introduced until the second movie, okay, now I can kind of see uh, if they're gonna go off book and make them not siblings. That that's good that they're scrapping too then because then that gives them the opportunity to actually do that whole storyline. Um, so yeah, you know what I I am I'm really really looking forward to this movie. I I really want a trailer already. Hopefully we get one. I heard we're not getting one till July, but I know when the guy went out and said that like a lot of fans got mad and he came out he was like oh well you guys actually might get one sooner so and I was like dude we better get one sooner because. If I'm, if they're gonna, there's rumor that this is gonna be a maze this year at Horror Nights, and I really hope it is. Uh, at the same time, me going opening weekend and this movie probably not coming out till mid October. It's gonna be weird, kind of going in, because I'm not gonna really know anything going in. It's gonna be like how Insidious was last year, where it was kind of like a living trailer and you walk through it and stuff like that. Um, at least over here, and I know in Orlando, your guys' uh, Insidious was part of your Horrors of Blumhouse, so. Yeah, but last year we had um, the Saw maze trailer basically because saw hadn't been released when when i i went to halloween horror nights but we had the maze there that was depicting the actual movie um yeah that's always a tough one with me the the like maze trailers basically is what what i like to call them um but like i said my opinion is so biased going into this <laughs> yeah you know what uh, like, like i always say we'll, we'll never know until it comes out or when we go through the maze you know i mean there might be it might be honestly a throwback to the past, and he just might throw in a couple scenes from the new movie. You know, I mean, I know John Murdy over here; uh, he's done that before. I, especially with this last Insidious maze, he's like, "Yes, this is a walking trailer, but we threw in some old uh, scares in there for you, so like you'll recognize a lot of the demons and stuff like that." So I was like, oh, "Okay, that's cool." Regardless, I really didn't like that maze because we already had like three 
or three or four insidious mazes, and I'm just like, all right, I'm done with insidious. Dude, get it out of here. You guys didn't get the Blumhouse of four. We got we got horrors of Blumhouse, but ours was um, ours was the Purge, Happy Death Day, and um, the Purge, Happy Death Day, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Sinister. Uh, whereas you guys, I think, believe got the Purge. I I think you got the Purge, Insidious, and Sinister. Yeah. Yeah, we got Happy Death Day over here. And that one that one was another walking trailer too, because I like I, I walked in like nothing knowing nothing about Happy Death Day and like two weeks later I went to the theaters and I was like, okay, that made make a lot more sense now, but um Yeah, so uh that that was pretty cool. But Halloween, um I'm hoping the additional photography goes well. Um I know Jason Blum constantly on Twitter teases like, Yeah, I've seen like this movie already like five times now and it's like Dude, stop rubbing it in our faces. I want to see it so bad already. And I realize you're the producer and everything, but damn, man, you're killing it for me. Seriously. And if, if the trailer really doesn't come out until July, that's that's a bummer. just torture. Um, yeah. And, and that makes me think maybe Comic-Con, um, if they do, because I know Blumhouse has been doing a lot of conventions lately, so we'll see. Um, this kind of bummed me out this week. Uh, this is the next topic we're going to talk about. So... Jurassic Park, it's really, uh, it's a, it's a famous franchise, a famous, uh, ride at both. Do you guys have it over there in Florida? A Jurassic Park yeah, ride? Uh, River Adventure? Yeah. Yep. So, uh, sadly, ours is coming to a close, um, in Hollywood, uh, Universal Studios Hollywood. It's closing down on September 3rd, 2018, but it's not completely going anywhere. They're going to be transforming it into Jurassic World, which is opening sometime in 2019. So... Um, I've been talking to a couple YouTubers about this. Uh, the league put up a poll of what we want to see in this new um, ride, and then I remember SoCal Exploring um, responding like they're going to add this in this ride. So um, I know for sure they're going to keep the giant T Rex because that's a must. That's that's so iconic at the uh, the River Adventure because as you go down that T Rex is like it's going to be it like looks like it's going to eat you and scares the shit out of people, but um, it's a good distraction for the drop. So um, yeah. I am bummed out, though, because I've only ridden this ride, I think, a total of 10 times my entire time going there. And the only reason I never ride it every time is because I don't like getting wet. Um, but when I get better from my injury, I think I'm going to have to go to Universal Studios a lot this summer and ride it. Because if it's going to be leaving, that's that's very sad because uh, it's such an iconic ride. It's been there for so long since, the, uh, since Jurassic World 3 opened up. Uh, or came out in theaters. Actually, uh, fun fact, in Jurassic World 3, there is a part in there where they are showing construction of a new um, a new Jurassic Park kind of uh, uh, experience in the States. That is actually the construction for the Jurassic Park ride, so that's that's a really cool thing, a little Easter egg. Uh, if you ever watch Jurassic Park 3 again, that's pretty cool. Nice. Um, uh, I'm going to have to out. Yeah, it's awesome. I always thought that was cool, but... Um, I, I am a little excited for Jurassic World. Maybe they're going to add some of the new dinosaurs that have been in the movie, and like it's kind of going to be like a fight between the T-Rex and the new uh, the dinosaurs they've been working on, like the new uh, genetic ones and stuff. That'd be really cool. Um, I had heard that, uh, what is it, the, the newest dinosaur that was in the this last movie um, that was like the main dinosaur that was mixed with like human DNA and a bunch of dinosaurs' DNA. Uh, I had heard they're going to add him at the end of the ride. So when you drop, it's going to be like a face-off between the T-Rex and the, the other dinosaur. So that should be pretty cool. Um, Is it the Indominus Rex? Yeah, the, the Indominus. Yeah, so that should be pretty cool. If they do that, I, I'm all I'm all for it. So um, Also, uh, since it is a river adventure, I would also like to see the, uh, the giant... Uh, uh, underground like alligator site you remember that one in Jurassic World? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The the one that comes jumps out of the water kinda like a like a a whale at, at SeaWorld would back in the past. <laughs> yeah, and it goes up and they do like a little Jaws reference when it when it eats the Great White and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. Um But I would like to see that in the in the ride for sure since it's a river adventure. That would be really cool to see. But uh, I don't know how they can really pull that off. That thing is huge, but it's universal. They can typically do just about anything. But yeah. if you guys want to visit Universal Studios Hollywood before September 3rd, I highly suggest it because this ride, once it's gone, it's not going to be the same as the original. You guys need to experience the original at least once before this ride closes because, honestly, it's so iconic that uh, 
even I was sad when I found out this is gonna. So I'm gonna have to go at least to July, August, and the first three days of September to try to write it. But uh, you know, the old, the old saying is uh, nothing ever stays the same. All, things always change for better or for worse. So. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a shame. Um, I, I miss some of the old rides. I commented also on TLEV's uh, post and basically said I would prefer that they just updated the animatronics because, of course, they look dated when you go through there, but I love the ride just as it is. Yeah. Uh, so that that's what I would prefer that they do, but it, it's going to be one of those situations where next year when you guys get it, I'm either going to be happy that ours is still around or I'm going to be jealous because yours is going to be so like nice and updated. If they keep kind of the general concept and just add the new the new dinosaurs with updated animatronics that's going to be pretty cool um one fun fact is the past three years when i've gone to to halloween horror nights i've always purchased the picture of the drop at jurassic park so i have the the most recent three years so that's going to be sad if it ends up coming to Orlando, and I'm no longer able to take that same exact picture. You know what? I actually might do that too for the uh, when I go back in like July and August, just to get that last picture. Like I got one last picture from Jurassic Park the ride, so um, I might I might do that just to get it, just to have it because it's gonna be gone, and it's gonna be like my last memory of Jurassic Park. Maybe I'll put it in my display case. Like this is the last time I ever rode Jurassic Park the ride. Uh, here's the picture and stuff. Um, but I have noticed lately that when we get something over here, it takes about two to three years to get you guys over there. Uh, I know they recently just did that with the Fast and Furious um, whole ride over there because we have that here on our studio tour, on our tram, and it's part of the studio tour experience. But I know over there in Orlando, you guys have it as a ride. So yeah. that uh, that took them about, I think, a year or two to get over there. Um what I am sad about too, and they recently just did it, I think last year, is when they when they closed down your guys' Terminator show, because yeah. I I used to love that show at Universal Studios Hollywood, and I was like, man, it's still in Florida, maybe I can make a trip out there, and and then it, it got shut down. I'm like, damn, man, I'm never gonna see that show again. Yeah, no, it was a great one with you just sitting there in the audience. It was a great great show. It was interactive. Uh, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and trust me, I I still am in my feelings about. Jaws being gone. That's a, a ride that I loved so much. Um, now it's only time before ET's next. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys still got an ET over there. Yeah. Um, I think Steven Spielberg has that one on lock. They won't touch it for now. That's good. Yeah, I, I run. I wanted to. I, I've I've only ever seen the Jaws ride on YouTube, and I've always wanted to ride that ride. It looks so badass and stuff like that. And I, I like the whole. You're supposed to be on this boat, and then Jaws is like following you around on Amity Island and stuff like that. So that was cool. Uh, I was a little bummed when they they closed that down. That that was kind of sad. Um, yeah, ET man. Do you guys have anything Despicable Me over there or no? Yeah, we have Despicable Me and and Shrek, which are basically the same type of show, just uh, different characters. Okay. Do you guys got anything like Simpsons over there? Yeah, you guys got a a whole Springfield yeah. land, right? Yeah, we have the whole Springfield land, and basically they they took the the ride vehicle from Back to the Future and turned it into the Simpsons. Okay, yeah, they did the same thing over here. I was so bummed when that ride closed down too, man, because oh, I love that ride. Yeah, and just enough why uh, the Jaws ride still exists, but overseas. In Singapore? Yep. Nice. I'm going to make a trip out there now, huh? I know, right? That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so... Go ride Jurassic Park, September 3rd, 2018. It's closing, and it will be transforming into Jurassic World. So, yeah. Um, we do a, a segment on our podcast every week that I'm happy to do because they've uh, come out and actually noticed it and stuff like that. And not a lot of companies do that. It's called uh, This Week on Crypt TV. And so Crypt TV, if you guys don't know, uh, is a famous YouTube channel that does um, – uh, horror shorts every week. They they post up three videos a week, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, new horror shorts every week. Uh, they they also have little series, and they do also promotionals for uh, some horror movies and stuff like that, which is really cool. They've worked with uh, Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood um, a couple of times, uh, or no, I think just once when they did a <clears throat> when they did a clown uh, thing for the Terror Tram, which was really cool. It was Eli Roth presents the Terror Tram, which was really awesome. I'm hoping they uh, work with uh, Crypt TV again in the future, which would make me happy. So um, this week on Crypt TV, the one that I found most, uh, uh, the one I liked a lot was called, uh, it's called uh, Nave. So basically it's part of their Crypt Fables. Um, 
I'm just going to explain it and then I'll show it on the screen. Um, so basically what this short was really cool because, uh, so there's this girl and she has this, uh, friend who's a guy, um, and they, they, they're constantly trying to make plans to hang out, but, uh, something always interferes with her going either on a date or hanging out with someone else. And so, uh, you start seeing in the guy's face that he's getting a little jealous of that and a little upset that they can't never hang out. So, um, you start seeing these people end up getting killed, their heads chopped off or something like that. But like old school, like. Um, back in like the uh, like the night stage where they used to like uh, like off with the head and stuff like that, um, kind of Alice in Wonderland type thing. But you see this guy and he's going around killing these uh, teens that she's trying to hang out with or that are doing her dirty. And um, you, you it, it's ultimately ultimately ends up revealing that it's actually the um, the friend uh, who's just honestly jealous and just wants the girl to himself. So. Um, it's just a very all-around interesting uh, video. I'm gonna play it on the screen right now for uh, all you guys that want to watch it. Also, I'm gonna—I always leave uh, Crypt TV's link in the description below because, like I said, each and every week they put up three new horror shorts, uh, and they are fantastic. Eli Roth is just one of my all-time uh, favorites, both as an actor and a director. So, uh, go subscribe to their channel. They're almost to a million subscribers, so let's help them get to a million subscribers. They very much deserve it. So, here's this. to me today in algebra. She takes my phone every single day. Oh my god, she takes my phone too. And I'm like, what if there was an emergency? Right? Oh, also, so I know that six row balcony was too expensive for you right now. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh oh. Second row from the stage, close enough to see his fucking tonsils, my treat. Shut <laughs> your face! Shut your face! Oh. <laughs> it must be so fun being the best human in the planet. It is. <laughs> Okay, so what do you think about Jessica? You know, I was like laughing my tits off with her the other night and I was thinking maybe she could come with us to the concert. I don't know, I feel like she tries so hard to be like you. Don't worry, you're still my best girl. <laughs> What's wrong? That new girl Fern just posted. <sighs> Running against Quinn for student body prize was pressed three years in a row at my last school. Sorry, Quinn. The tables will turn if you vote for Fern. Jesus, it has 107 likes. It's, it's still early. Maybe she'll drop out or drop dead or something. Um, hello. Where have you been? I've been calling you for like three days straight. Hi. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, but Madame President has a packed schedule trying to keep all of her student body happy. Well, I'm proud of you, but I miss you. I was beginning to think you forgot about me. Okay, so for Charlie tonight, are we thinking slutty or like cute but pretty slutty? Charlie, it's our movie night. Oh, shit. Well, we'll do it soon, I promise. Look, he's like a delicious double McBug burger. <laughs> Cute. I heard he was still with Ashley. 
Well, according to him, she's a total clinger, and they broke up like a month ago. Anyways, I gotta go change, so I'll call you later, okay? Love you. Sorry to ruin your date, Charlie, but Quinn's too good for you. with your head. <laughs> Watch new scary bits every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And that was this week's Crypt TV video. I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I do. Um... It's kind of weird always filming it on the podcast because I always have to do like a little gap and then actually edit the video in. Uh, but like none of us know, don't even watch it. Uh, it, it it's honestly, it sometimes weirds me out because I'm just like, oh, here it is. Okay, we're back. So <laughs> <laughs> Be, being on, on this side and it's it's my first time on a podcast. It, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, but when this is all edited together, you'll see it all come together and stuff like that. You'll see the kill of the week, the bad acting and the crypt TV. So. Nice. Um, it'll be all put together and stuff like that. So now we're going to move on to subtopics. These are uh, topics that uh, didn't make our main slate of topics, but they still catch our interest because they're horror related. So I thought I would share them with you guys. So we're going to talk about the first one. Uh, Stranger Things season three is well under uh, filming right now, which is awesome. And uh, they just uh, had a, a new cast member join. Her name is uh, Frances uh, Francesca uh, Real. I guess she just joined the cast. I don't know what she's really in. Um, I just saw this news on Bloody Disgusting. Um, I'm about to look up her IMD right now. But uh, are you a fan of Stranger Things? So I will have to admit to not being a huge fan. And I actually didn't. I, I watched the first season and wasn't enticed to watch the second up till the maze announcement. Um, being such a huge fan of Halloween Horror Nights, I had to follow it up. Even though this year we're not getting uh, season two. I just felt like I, I had to do the, the show justice. I will say that the second season to me was much better than the first. I haven't done much follow-up on what's coming out, but I, I do look forward to, to a third season. I'll, I'll definitely be watching. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I love the show. The show is awesome. The sci-fi is awesome. The horror is awesome. And um, this was part of the leak lineup as far as uh, uh, the leak lineup for uh, HHN Hollywood, at least. Um and before I, I talk more about the leak lineup, I'm going to just go out here. Me and Eddie, we do not condone leaks. We are literally just the guys who pass down the news from what we hear from other sources. Do not condone any of it. We do not, uh, you know, we don't do any of that. We just literally pass down the news. So before anyone comes at us like you guys are all leakers, we just literally pass down the news that we hear. So just throwing that out there because I know there's uh, there's a lot of people that take that stuff serious. But... Um, yeah, so part of the leaked lineup was uh, Stranger Things. Um, I know over here we're only getting season one. Um, it finally got confirmed. What, what season are you, are you guys getting? One or two? I believe we're getting season one as well. I think uh, you and you and I are getting basically mirrored uh, mazes. Okay, yeah. I know, I know that, um, yeah, uh, they do Horror Nights at Florida and uh, Hollywood. They do pretty much almost the same mazes except like one or two usually. And then, uh, of course, Florida has a couple of uh, mazes that they make that are original concepts, which I always thought are badass. I hope I hope one day that we get more of that over here because original concept mazes are really cool. Um, but yeah. um, Stranger Things, uh, I'm excited because we're having ours in a sound studio this year. 
soundstage. So that's 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 really cool. We uh, that gives us opportunity to kind of mess with weather and uh, lighting and stuff like that, which is really cool. Um, but back to uh, Francisca Real. So she joined the cast. Uh, they got that got announced this week. She hasn't really been in much. She's only been in like eight things credited mostly. Uh, I'm gonna read her credits real quick. She was in a movie called The Future, the no, The Furies of War, which was a short. Uh, she played a studio crew member. She was in a movie or a short called Goodbye Charm City. She was in a TV movie called Paradise by the Dashboard Light. She was in the TV series uh, Blue Bloods, very good show. Uh, she was in a Netflix series as a main character called uh, named Emily called Haters Back Off. She was in a short called Cabin, uh, a movie called Yes, God, Yes, and most recently, Stranger Things Season 3. So um, I would say this was one of the biggest things of her career. <laughs> Sounds like it because I haven't heard of any of the rest. <laughs> um, besides Blue Bloods, uh, she was only on one episode. That's a pretty well-known uh, show on CBS. Yeah, uh, her. I would say this is going to pretty much launch her career going towards the future. Um, she is signed on for all eight episodes, so she will be a reoccurring character in this show. Um, and yeah, I also know that, uh, Uma Thurman's, uh, daughter's in this show this season as a reoccurring character as well. So I'm curious to see who she's going to play in this show, which should be really cool. Interesting. Yeah. So that should be pretty cool. Um, that comes out, I want to say this October again, I know they're well filming it right now. And so that gives also Horn Knights, a a little, um, a little opportunity to promote the series as they are with the maze. So that's, they, they, they always, they're always famous for doing that. They did that with walking dead. They did that with Ash versus evil dead. Um, they've done that with so much stuff, uh, American horror stories. So that's going to be cool. Um, all right. So, uh, the curse and cult of Chucky star Fiona, uh, do, do, do riff. I'm sorry. Uh, she joined the purge TV series. Now I've been really kind of following this show. This is going to be on USA, the, the USA network. So, um, I'm, I'm kind of excited for a Purge series and I'm at the same time a little skeptical about it. Yeah. Um, just to chime in a bit, the Purge to me has, uh, I'm not sure if you're a huge fan of the actual movies or not, but I've always been a huge fan of the, of the scare zone that, that we've had in Orlando, but never a huge fan of the actual movies. Um, the concept to me just never came together on film, but comes together so well in scare zones. Now, here's the thing. I, I've always been a fan of the concept of the purge. Um, for me, I think the movies have gotten better as the sequels came out. Um, and I, and I, and I love the purge, uh, the movies, at least, um, not a lot of people like the first one. I kind of like the first one. Um, only because we, that's when we were introduced to the purge and we got to see what it's like inside the house of a purge. Now, uh, with the movies going on, we got to see what it was like outside. So we got to see both uh, points of views like that. And not a lot of people uh, realize that, um, which I thought it was pretty cool. But with the Purge TV series, I've been kind of reading about this. And they're saying that, so it's going to take place, the majority of it is going to take place the night of the Purge. But, um, and then I think the rest of the show is going to take place like post-Purge and stuff like that. So you're going to see, I think it's going to be pre-Purge, uh, Purge, and then post-Purge. So it's going to be like, you're going to see rivals build up, and then the purge is going to happen. You're probably going to see them kill each other. Um, what kind of makes me mad, or not mad, but like skeptical, is that... Um, so I don't know how many episodes this uh, show is going to have. Uh, if it's not going to go for like a 10 or 12 episode season. Um, but if they're going to do a couple episodes that take place in just one night, that's kind of going to be pushing it a little bit. Um is it going to be like three episodes set up the, you know, pre purge. And then it's going to be like the majority of the seasons during the purge. And then like the last three episodes are like freaking post purge and shit like that. So I'm just curious to see how they're going to do this show. Yeah, no. I, and you know what, just thinking about it while, while you're talking, I could kind of see the concept coming together a little bit better in a show because they'll have more opportunity to do some character build um before actual events occur or before any major events occur during during the actual show which i think that'll be interesting but um like i said yeah the the movie itself never really captured me even though i, I gave it a, a a chance but i've always been a huge huge fan of what they do at halloween horror nights yeah at horror nights they they do a very good job with the scare zones i think a lot of people over here in hollywood that are just getting uh tired of the scare zones because we've gotten that like the last uh 
not last year, but we got it like two or three years in a row, and people were like, oh, that's just a way of just, that's kind of lazy and stuff like that. I've enjoyed every scare zone that the Purge has come out with because I, me personally, when they do opening scare movies, I get the goosebumps of the uh, alarm going off and then the announcement going off, so that, that, that gives me goosebumps every time. On top of that, the costumes are really creative and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, and they, they had last year at Orlando, they had like the guys riding around in motorcycles with like the moving truck and they would bring somebody out of the moving truck to actually do like a murdering ceremony in front of everybody. So it was really cool and interactive. I, I mean, I, I could get, I, I can understand why some people don't like the repetitiveness, but I, I can't say there has been any particular year, even after it being repeated like three times at Orlando as well that I've said, uh, you know, they could get rid of it. I, I, I'm always kind of open to it. I, I like it a lot. That's why I like your guys' area, because you guys have way more room to, like, include, like, vehicles and stuff like that. With ours, since ours is, like, on a hill, and then you have to go down just to go to the lower lot and stuff like that, um, where they originally put the purges on the very, the, you know, the entranceway. And there's not, a, like, they were doing a lot of construction when this was going down, when they were doing the scare zone. So there wasn't a lot of room to bring out, like, vans and motorcycles and stuff like that um, without it being crowded. So that's why I kind of like uh, your guys' area because you guys have like a ton of space for that to all happen and stuff like that, which is really cool. And um, that's that's another reason why I want to go overseas. Last year, you guys had the trick or treat scare zone too, which was really cool. Oh my god, that thing was awesome. Yeah, that looked cool, and I'm hoping we eventually get that as a maze pretty soon because that movie is such a good movie. Have you ever been to Halloween Horror Nights at, at uh, Orlando? No, I've I've never been to Orlando, and I I really want to make a trip out there. Oh man, yeah, you got to do it. Yeah, that that scare zone last year was impeccable. Um, the you you had the you know the fat kid in the in the doorstep throwing up, and the guy just sitting there with like the knife, the music playing, and then all those jack o' lanterns were actually like hand carved. It's crazy. Ah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I know Awkward Arsic went last year, and he said it was pretty cool. So I gotta I gotta go. I gotta make a trip out there. I gotta just save up some money to do it. Um, cause I want to do like a, go to universal during the day and then go to Horror Nights at night. Cause I also want to experience universal there during the day too, to see a lot of their stuff and all that. So yeah. Do you, do you guys have a Hogwarts express Hogwarts? Oh, here's the thing we have, we have the train, but it's only for taking pictures of. And that's another reason why I want to see your guys Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter land. Cause you guys got, um, uh, you guys got Diagon Alley, which I thought is badass. So it is I'm, i've never even like watched the full series and still like when i walked into it i was mind blown yeah you guys got the, like you could yeah you guys this train is like an actual ride like to it's like going to hogwarts and stuff which i thought was cool and then the dementors come and all that like, yeah that's, that's so badass and it actually takes you to another park oh does it so, really yeah so the in order to to be able to ride the hogwarts express you have to have the park to park ticket so the park to park ticket allows you to go from universal studios and uh, Islands of Adventure in the same day. So um, I, I'm not sure if you've seen the map. We have Universal Studios as a separate park and Islands of Adventure, but they sit right next to each other. Yeah. And then that train connects them, but you can only ride it if you have the park-to-park -park ticket. So if you have a single park ticket, you can't ride it. So it's like a park hopper kind of thing, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Like if you get a if you get an annual pass there, does it come with both parks then? Um, yeah, I, be I believe you have the option of either two parks or three parks now that we have Volcano Bay. Oh, yeah, you guys got the, yeah, the, the new water. Yeah. Yeah. Have I'm actually going to be there in, t in three days. I was going to say, have you been there yet? I mean, it looks like I've been, I, I remember watching the construction updates and they look, it looked pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that water park is, is really, really nice. Volcano Bay has some crazy slides, all from like, the like type of like drop tube type of slides where you're just sitting in a tube and then the the floor drops from below you, uh, to yeah. to some really cool like uh, group rides where like you're like kind of like on a rapid, yeah. Uh, and then the the like atmosphere itself, you actually feel like you're kind of in like some type of like uh, I guess like a Hawaii type of themed location because they have like little bars and huts where you could like just relax. That's badass. I I, I yeah I gotta make a trip out there because I know my dad wants to go to. Uh... We all want to go to – we want to see Disney World for sure. There's a lot of stuff that I want to see at Disney World. Um, I, I just want to go in general. And then, of course, I've been wanting to go to their Universal Studios. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try to – we're going to try to look into a travel agency and start, like, putting money in and investing uh, try to get a trip out there and stuff like that. So, nice. see what goes down. All right. Um, that was awesome. I always like going <laughs> off topic. It's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Perch TV series, hopefully it's good. 
USA Network. I don't know when it's coming out. Hopefully, I think it's oh yeah, it's scheduled for a fall release. So coming out this year should be good. Next thing we're gonna talk about. Uh, this was pretty interesting. Um, if you're a fan of the Tales from the Crypt show, they uh, a fan released a rare cinematic preview for the unreleased Tales from the Crypt video game. Um, so I guess back in the day when they made that movie, they were gonna make a video game for I think I don't whatever the console was at the time, but uh, it never got released. So they released a cinematic preview for it. Um, it looked pretty good. Um, it has obviously the uh, the main character you see on Tales from the Crypt, which is like the skeleton guy, and he's in like the ticket booth and stuff. Like he's just kind of explaining the whole concept of what it is and stuff like that. And there's more stories to it. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of Tales of the Crypt, Stephen King, it, it's it's awesome. I, I love the original Tales from the Crypt. Um, such a well put together uh, horror little series that they had of, of of stories and stuff like that, which is cool. Um, even the freaking the book is cool too. It's in a, it's a graphic novel, but it's like old style kind of graphic novel and stuff like that. I think it's the only one of the only graphic novels that uh, Stephen King ever did, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, a huge fan of the Tales of the Crypt series and that laugh. And just a small tidbit, I'll keep us on on uh, on topic. He was. The first icon, at least for Orlando, of Halloween Horror Nights ever. That's badass. Yeah, you guys. That's another thing I'm jealous about of you guys at Horror Nights. You guys get awesome icons. Like I, I want an icon over here so bad. That's one of the things that I, I, I kill for. I, we almost thought we were getting one too when they did the uh, Eli Roth Terror Tram, because um, they had a like they had a clown that was like the face of the Terror Tram. I was like, okay, it's original concept. We might be getting. Uh, freaking icons now this is like the start of an icon and then the next year the freaking terror tram was titans of terror and i'm like yeah we're not getting icons anytime soon wait hold up so you guys have never had like jack the clown no that's what? why we love that's why like if you ever look at like if you look at videos from like awkward Arqu no awkward rc has been to a couple of uh orlando's i think but if you look at like the league's videos and like we may uh i know the league made a video of what they're jealous of of uh over there in uh hhn i think i made one too i don't remember and then i know zombie chris made a video of what he's jealous of over here at rhhn um but yeah we've never had jack the clown and uh one of the most iconic commercials that i love looking at is when uh the guy walks into the tent and um, Jack the Clown's sitting there. He's like the fortune teller, and he puts like the three cards down. It's Jason, Freddy, and uh, Leatherface. And then the guy yeah. goes, "So what's my future?" And he goes, "You don't have one." And then he kills them. I'm just like, "Damn, that gave me goosebumps, man." Yeah, yeah, no, the damn, I didn't know that, man. I got to do a little bit more research about the differences between our events. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say about the only thing different from our event is like, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you guys are dry as well, right? It's dry event. Yeah, it's a dry event. Um, I think one of the only differences is just probably makeup and stuff like that because we're in Hollywood, so like all that shit's like you know a studio and stuff like that. But I would say everything else is pretty much the same. Like I I I I praise you guys over there because you guys had a way better freaking Ash vs Evil Dead and Shiny Maze than we did. The only thing that I didn't like about the Shiny Maze over there is like the the head pieces they gave for the guys who played Jacks and stuff like that. Like I thought that yeah. was kind of <laughs> that the little bolt caps. Yeah, but uh, as that far, maze was off. Yeah, yeah. As far as the maze though, I mean, it looked cool. You guys had an actual like opening elevator. It looked like and um, looks like you guys had actual twins for like the twin scene and everything, which looked pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and the the hedge maze was amazing. We had like the I don't know if you guys had it as well, but there was actually like uh, I don't know what they call it, but it's like the the fake me out snow. Oh yeah, we didn't have snow, but our hedge maze at the end it was just like really cold because uh, it was the maze was actually outdoors, um, but it was under like a like a tent kind of say, uh, but it was like right behind the the mummy queue, so. Um, our hedgehog maze, like the only thing that like made it feel realistic was it was it actually felt cold, so that was pretty cool. Gotcha, nice. But um, that's cool. I didn't know that the the first icon for HHN Orlando was the Tales from the Crypt uh, character. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you get a chance, uh, you find that on the internet, look it up. It's a rare cinematic preview for the unreleased Tales from the Crypt video game. Um, a little sad that I never get to play that. Um, Bill Moisley. He is most famous for being in Rob Zombie movies. Uh, his most famous work for Rob Zombie movies is uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects. He plays the brother. Um, and they are coming back to do another movie, to wrap up the trilogy, called Three from Hell. Um, but he has come out and said that he wants to play Freddy Krueger 
And fans went crazy over that, so now they're petitioning it, which um, I would have to say I'm on that petition too because uh, Bill Mosley is a really good horror actor, and um, I think he would make it a freaking funny Freddy Krueger. Yeah, you know what? The the last remake of Freddy Krueger was so bad, in my opinion, that I, I think now any any remake can only get better. Um, I don't know about you, but the 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 like uh, the new face that they tried to that they tried to put on Freddy just kind of took me completely out of it. I so here's my opinion on that movie. I agree. I do agree with the thing, I, but I did see where they were trying to go. They're trying to make it more of a realistic burn, but. Um, I do agree. I, I like the, the actor who played Freddy Krueger because I've always just been a fan of his. Um, I really became a fan of his after watching Watchmen. Um, he was great as Rorschach in there. But um, uh, he, see, and that's a lot of things people don't get is because I, I know it's hard to take up a mantle of a serial killer and like a different horror character. Um, a perfect example of this is the guy uh, who played It, Bill Skarsgård. Um, they were giving him a lot of shit for Pennywise, but uh, he went out and did his own version of Pennywise. He wanted to be different from Tim Curry's. Um, I have a feeling that the guy who played uh, Freddy Krueger in the remake kind of wanted to be different from um, what's his name? I forget his name. That's sad. Uh, uh, da, 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 hold on. Uh, Robert England. Robert England. There you go. Yeah. Um, Robert England. Uh, he. Uh, he is iconic for playing Freddy Krueger, obviously. And, um, you know, Wes Craven came back in, like, the 80s and, and made that movie what it is today. A lot of people are scared to, to go to sleep now and after that movie and stuff like that. But um, I just think he tried to do his own thing. And um, he, did a, he did a decent job, but I don't I, – I can see why people don't like it. They didn't like – obviously, the makeup was one thing. Um, it was almost like a shot for shot remake too for this movie, which I see, just with more modern effects and more of a backstory for Freddy Krueger. So that was pretty cool. But uh Bill Moisley, if he gets the opportunity to play Freddy Krueger, I think he can do a very good job. Put on the classic makeup and make him just crack jokes, that'd be so awesome. Yeah, I'd I'd love to see the, the Krueger uh franchise get brought back to life. Speaking of uh Krueger, he went against uh Mr. Jason Voorhees uh one time. Uh, this was a little cool fun fact. Six of the actors who played Jason Voorhees recently got together and got back in their old school costumes. So I thought that was really cool. That is cool. That's, is there any, like, pictures? or? Um, there's just a picture of, uh, you know, it's just literally their costumes. I think they got together either at a convention or something, and they just got together, uh, and they threw on, I think it was uh, part two Jason like I like I'll, for I think from part two and on because I think um what's his name, uh something Hobber or something like that he's he's iconic for playing Jason for so many years, um he did the majority of like the last movies so um yeah I mean I I just think that's cool that they all got to back together and they're like let's just throw on our costumes again see how that's you know it's been a while. Yeah no that that's a cool little idea to think of that. Yeah. I wonder how many people I played Michael Myers. Yeah you know what and I know the first guy he played the first two movies and he came back for this movie. So that's pretty cool. I thought that was interesting. Um, I think I want to say about the same amount of played, uh, Jason Voorhees because I mean, all you really need is a tall guy and then put him in a costume and that's about it, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So I've been following this game. I'm, I'm a huge, I love video games. I have uh, pretty much almost all the most recent consoles, except for the Switch, because I haven't had the money to buy that yet. But um, So there's this gaming company called Overkill, and they're making a new Walking Dead game. Uh, the last month or two, they've been releasing trailers leading up to uh, the, re the reveal of the game, hopefully pretty soon, maybe at E3 this year. But they just released a third trailer this week. Um, and I got to say, the effects on this Walking Dead game looks really good. Um, we have confirmed that it's going to take place in Atlanta. We don't know, though, if it's going to be in the same universe as either the comic books or the TV show or the uh, Telltale Walking Dead games. Um, obviously, it's not a Telltale game. It's actually going to be an RPG where you get to like control and kill zombies and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Um, this new trailer, though, featured an old man. And he's kind of just sitting in the car, reliving his past. Uh, he's telling, he's talking to a zombie. The zombie doesn't have a, a jaw or anything, so he can't really bite him or anything. But he's in the car, 
and he's kind of just chilling with a zombie and he's talking about like yeah my granddaughter once came up to me and said uh grandpa are you gonna die one day he goes yeah well we all die and then he eventually she she asked him like well am i gonna die one day and he kind of looks at himself he goes how do you how do you answer a question like that to a freaking five-year-old and stuff so he's looking at pictures and he's looking at old toys and stuff like that and he's kind of getting memories looking like he's getting depressed looking like he's gonna commit suicide at one point um, but, uh, as the camera pans out of the car, you just see him in the car and, and zombies are, are, uh, starting to surround the car and then a horde of zombies come. And then the freaking trailer just ends and it says overkills the walking dead. I've never heard of this company called overkill. So I'm interested in seeing how they're going to do this game because from the effects, just from these cutscenes, it looks really good. Like, I don't know if you're, if you play video games, but this game looks amazing. So uh, I do. Um, but I'm very selective with the games that I play, and usually I, I'm a more of like a mass multiplayer game. So like, um, the the one thing that does pique my interest here is I, I'm a fan. I'm actually caught up with the with the actual TV series, um, even though I know that it's it hasn't been the same for like the past season. But I've still kept up with it, so I, I look forward to the game. And also, I was a huge fan of uh, Resident Evil. Um, and when Resident Evil came on, came out with like a an online version where you could actually play online and do campaign with other people in this zombie world. So if they do something like that with this game, that'd be crazy. Yeah. Cause it, um, the trailers are out now. There's three trailers of three different characters. Uh, I'm assuming these guys are going to be the main characters of the movie. So, um, or I'm not the movie. I'm sorry, the game. So, um, yeah, I mean, check them out. I mean, if you get a chance or anyone out there who is curious of what this game looks like, it just looks amazing. Like I said, I've never heard of this company called overkill. Um, but they look like they're taking on a challenge, and I, I'm just really excited to see where this goes. Um, okay, so Blumhouse, back to those guys again. Um, they recently came out at CinemaCon, or I think before that, um, and they announced that they're doing an Unfriended sequel out of nowhere. Like, they already filmed it, and it's they, they've been doing screenings at conventions and all that. It's called Unfriended the Dark Web, and it's getting a July release. Um... And this kind of goes full circle again with uh, sequels. I, I, I'm a little skeptical about this because the first time Friday wasn't too good. I, I'm at least I didn't like it too much. Uh, the concept was pretty cool, but I don't know how they're going to continue on with this story. Yeah, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the original either. I, I was really excited for it just because I thought it'd be cool, but I don't think they pulled it off too well. So um, although my horror instincts will probably take me to watch it, um, I'm not, I'm not expecting much. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'll go watch it. I still haven't watched Truth or Dare, and I know that movie bombed and did shitty, but uh, I'm waiting for it to come out because I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna watch it. I just want to see what it's like. Um, I did watch. Uh, there's this guy I watch on YouTube called Found Flicks, and he does Ending Explains. So I watched the Ending Explain on it, and I kind of already know what uh, happens, but I want to see it played out on screen. So, um. I might do the same thing with Unfriended. I'm not too sure, but we'll see. Um, I don't know how the reviews have been doing for the screenings lately, but I don't know. Yeah, um, maybe it's one of those straight-to-DVD ones that <laughs> I w I'll, I'll wait up till it gets to DVD. Yeah. Um, all right, so this is the last, is the last uh, bit, of bit of news because, because I just feel, I just feel that, that this movie this didn't really deserve, didn't really deserve much, as much news as, as much news. news. Um, Sharknado 6. It's going to be coming out in August. I just think this franchise needs to die off. Thankfully, it is dying off because this is going to be the last Sharknado movie they ever make. Um, uh, on top of that, they're doing a Sharknado week leading up to the sixth movie this summer. So, I don't know, man. I've never been a fan of Sharknado. I don't like it. I think it's the stupidest concept ever made. But it's grown this cult following where... As stupid as it is, people still watch it. Yeah, and I mean, it happens. You get those those uh, stupid movies that end up having like this huge following for that specific reason because they're stupid. Um, I am just like you. I'm not a fan of it, um, but I think the the best send off for them would be a house at Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> oh my god! I, I just wanted to see how they would even try to accomplish that though. That'd be like <laughs> the... <sighs> that'd be some. I would say there had to be a lot of fans involved just to get that tornado wind effect. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Sharks just jumping out everywhere. Rabbit and stuff. I don't know. I just don't know. This one's supposed to be like a time travel one. I don't They've done so many. Uh, I, 
I just can't talk enough about that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, the CGI is terrible and the acting's terrible, but it's all like it all seems so purposely terrible. Yeah, I, it's bad. So yeah, if you guys are interested in Sharknado Six, it's getting it got an August premiere date. Uh, not for sure on the date. Uh, I didn't look it up, but it's coming out sometime this year in August. And if you uh, want to watch every movie leading up to Sharknado Six, they are doing a Sharknado Week. Uh, that is returning this summer, so they'll probably play all the movies leading up to Sharknado 6 premiere and probably have a countdown like they do every year on the Sci-Fi Channel. Uh, all right, so now we're coming to the near end of the podcast, and we're going to do our last segment on the show before we say our goodbyes called This Week on YouTube. Basically, I go around uh, on my YouTube subscription list, and I pretty much name off all my favorite YouTubers, and um, I mention what videos they had come out this week. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about, uh, SoCal Exploring, he came out with Theme Park fans uh, react to Disneyland rides, Monsters, Inc., and the Grizzly River Run. That's pretty uh, interesting concept. Uh, so he went on rides and basically reacted to them and stuff like that. So go check that out. Splash Mountain Evacuation and Breakdown at Disneyland. And the Electric Eel Front Seat 4K POV at SeaWorld San Diego. It's a new ride that just opened up, and he's got... Uh, connections with media so he got to write it uh one of the first people to write it and so that's pretty cool um who's next let's see uh awkward arsic this week he came out with uh three new videos paranormal activity in the yosemite the awkward vlog uh five reasons why we love halloween horror nights uh and i think you started that trend right you started that yeah that was me <laughs> yeah so uh it's spread around to a lot of the majority of youtubers which is awesome Hopefully it keeps going. Um, I know I made a video because the league called or challenged me to that. Um, and so, yeah, let's just keep that going. Cause... Yeah, I'm loving how, how it's spreading. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Thank you for that, by the way. Of course, man. I, I hope to bring some other ones that keep you guys enticed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually going to I gotta make my new HHN Memories video this week. So I'm going to call some people out. You might be one of those people. All right, man. I look forward to it. Bring it on. <laughs> All right. Uh, and his last video he posted up, which was yesterday, was the Predator trailer reaction. Um, we talked about Predator a lot on this uh, channel, so go check out um, the trailer if you get a chance or his or the reactions. So, yeah. Hey, uh, if, if I could jump in right there and just say the opening to a Awkward R6 Yosemite, the just the, the editing was really cool on that. Oh, yeah. And the freaking ending scared the shit out of me, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> was not expecting that ending. And I was watching. I was like, "Oh God!" <laughs> so, uh, next thing we're talking about, Crypt TV. We always talk about them on the podcast. Uh, they came out with a couple of uh, videos this week: Mayhem, Murder, and Monsters, Bones Broken, a scary hor uh, short horror um, short, obviously. Uh, Nave, which is what we talked about today on the podcast. Uh, Nightmare. And knock knock. So go check out Crypt TV new videos Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and let's help them get to a million subscribers because they're almost there. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about uh, Zombie Chris. Um, so he came out with a couple videos this week. Uh, he, he came out with a Jordan Peele announcement video of a, of his new horror movie, uh, Predator trailer and series uh, Horror Talk, and HHN Battleground, a new series he's doing. Also, he's got merch out. So. Uh, go check out his merch. I've looked at it, and I'm thinking about buying a shirt because that's what I do with other YouTubers. I support them. Um, who's next on the list? Uh, you know, I'm going to give a shout-out to my second channel uh, because why not? Uh, I have a second channel up uh, where I do pretty much all nerd and geeky stuff. Also, you can find my second podcast there, the Nerd Fan Base Podcast. But this week I came out with uh, the, Death, the Death of Wolverine. Uh, review and breakdown and the Cobra Kai episode one review. So if you guys are interested in any of those, go check them out. Links in the description below. Uh, I'm going to go over to my, uh, my guest because he puts up amazing content as well. His name is Edutainment. And I have to say before I uh, say that, that's a freaking genius name. How'd you come up with that? <laughs> You know, it just came to me one day. Actually, and it's funny because when I first started my channel, it, it wasn't up till a week later that I changed it to Edutainment. And uh, I think at first it was just like, ho like Eddie Horror or something like that. And I don't know, Edutainment came to me and I just felt it 
cheesy enough but catchy enough that people would like it. Yeah, it's awesome because it's almost like entertainment but edutainment, so that's awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> edutainment this week came out with uh, Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights 28 Speculation number 3, and he's got a whole speculation series on his channel along with other amazing videos. Uh, go check him out. He posts uh, whenever he gets the chance to post, uh, just like a lot of us. So uh, definitely check him out. Give him a subscribe. I can see him up and coming. He's going to... He's going to make it pretty good up here. It takes time, but, dude, it pays off. Trust me. Yeah, and, yeah, I try to do at least one video or, or two a week, and I, I know it definitely takes time, and it's hard work. A lot of people don't even know what what goes into doing these podcasts and just editing videos. It's it's tough, but um, this week I'll, I'll be going to Universal Studios, and I'll be there for, like, five days, so hopefully I'll get some good content for everybody. Nice, nice. So be on the lookout. Coming out with some videos next week, guys. All right. Uh couple good friends of mine, the League of Extraordinary Vloggers. Uh, if you want to see the video they challenged me to, check out Top 3 Reasons Why We Love Halloween Horror Nights. They were challenged by my guest, Eddie Tainment, and it's been going around all of YouTube. So, yeah, definitely go check that out. Um, who else is on this list? Uh, let me see. Dead Meat. If you guys are fans of kill counts and stuff like that, Dead Meat's your guy to go to. Um, not only does he do kill counts, but he talks about, uh, he does a podcast called the dead meat podcast. Uh, he does, uh, live streams and most recently he just got done doing a collaboration with, um, crypt TV. So that was cool. But this week on his channel, he came out with the happy death day kill count, uh, final destination, dead meat podcast. Number 10 saw three, uh, kill count, the future of the saw kill count series, Outlast Let's Play live stream number five, finishing the game, and Saw for the kill count. So he's been kind of doing the Saw kill counts, which are really cool. Um, definitely go check him out. Give him a subscribe. Um, tell him that the Knights of Four sent you. And I want to give another shout out. They haven't posted any videos uh, yet, but they are uh, coming soon. Um, I know they're starting a podcast and stuff like that, and I had uh, contacted them to be on it pretty soon in the greater Los Angeles area. So, uh, HHA Addict, uh, he's making a comeback, um, and I cannot be more excited for that. So, uh, shout out to HHA Addict because hopefully we get to see some content from you guys soon. That is going to do it for the Mindless Sword podcast. I want to give a very big thank you to uh, Eddie Tainment uh, from Eddie Tainment. Because uh, he agreed to be on the podcast, and I am glad that we got him on. Because now you guys can go check out his channel and binge watch all his videos, much like I did when I f uh, figured him out too. Um, so yeah, man, thank you for being on the podcast. Yeah, of course, man. I appreciate it. I was actually really excited to be on here, and it, it went extremely well. A lot better than I thought I'd do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. We get all these guests on the podcast, and they and they get like really like nervous and stuff. Like Awkward Arsic was the same way. He's like, I don't know if you like me, dude. I'm really awkward. I'm like, dude, we all are. That's why we're in this. That's why we're in this like type of business and stuff like that. And he got on, and we immediately clicked. And uh, he might be on next week. We're gonna talk about it this week. Uh, hopefully, I can get him on next week. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, everyone who's joined the podcast has had such a good time. Um, and I'm glad that you got to be on the podcast. Hopefully this, uh, podcast gives you more, uh, subscriptions and viewerships cause you very much deserve it, uh, with the content you make and stuff like that. If you guys want to know what's going on in Florida and you're over here on the West coast, edutainment's your guy to go to because this guy, uh, makes very good, uh, Horn Nights content for Orlando, keeps you up to date with stuff. Not only does he do Horn Nights stuff, but he does... Uh, horror related stuff much like this channel so go check out Eddie Tamet links in the description below give him a subscribe check out his videos give him thumbs up all that good stuff put on notification bells all that good stuff for Eddie Tamet because he very much deserves it Eddie Tamet again thank you for being on the podcast and uh, like I say to all my guests you're welcome back anytime thanks man and don't people don't forget to subscribe to Nights of Horror as well Yep, hit that subscribe button, notification button, uh, keep up with the podcast, keep up with my channel. Go to my second channel, Anthony Zaragoza, check that out if you guys want to see all things geek-related. I'm Anthony, that's Eddie Tainment. Uh We've been your host for today. We'll see you guys next time on the Mindless Horror Podcast.